if you are an investor anywhere out there, then the place that you should be really doing business is here in Europe. Kinga, good morning and thank you for doing this session. Good morning, Shahab. Great to be here. Thank you for the invitation. Kinga, you are the general partner and founder of the first European venture fund set up and managed by female managers. Could you tell me more about your focus? Sure. Actually, you know, when we started out a couple of years ago, I think it was seven or eight, we were very surprised that there were so few women in the industry. And um, for us, it was very natural to be fund managers. We started investing predominantly in the, the digital side, in machine learning driven startups, in software, marketplaces, different business models. And what we noticed was the small number of women that are VC managers, that are writing checks and that are female founders. And this has carried on until today. Um, it's one of the reasons that we set up European Women in VC, which is a platform that is now followed by over 6,000 people who are investors across Europe with a mission to change the state of European VC ecosystem. Around 4% of venture capital assets is under the management of women. And this means that 96% is not. Um, so the default scenario means that ideas that are solving huge issues um, that are created by female founders don't get funding because a lot of them are very much misunderstood by the investor community. And in the work that I'm doing, I'm very much focused on trying to move the needle towards a more equitable uh, ecosystem, more parity, and having access to capital for female fund managers and for female startup founders. That's a huge job uh, because we are starting from a very, very low level. But I think that Europe needs to change. We need to start at the very top where the money is. That sounds great. What are some of the technologies or markets that excite you in the digital space right now? Well, there is a, a huge push to what we are going to see uh, is the development of metaverse, for sure. Um, this is an opportunity. It's also a big danger of how this will develop. But I think it's very clear from the recent acquisition uh, by Microsoft of Activision that this is an area that all technology companies are seeing as running at the forefront. There is gaming, there is the metaverse, there is us functioning in another reality. Another area which is, I think, absolutely incredible looking forward is the convergence of machine learning, of AI, the whole of the digital sphere with what is biology, chemistry, healthcare, what I would call biology 2.0. And this is an area that will allow us to provide faster diagnostics, faster treatment, and the development of new vaccinations. I think merging that area with quantum is going to be, yet again, a huge, huge step forward. This is one of these um, areas where not only can we move faster with diagnostics and treatment, but we can also play a huge role as Europe that can bring a lot of positive change and impact onto the market. Kinga, you are also a board member of the European Innovation Council, the EIC, as well as an independent investment committee member of the EIC fund, the largest deep tech fund in Europe. That goes to show that you see a role for the government as an investor. Can you elaborate on this role? I think there is a huge need for the European Innovation Council, but whatever happens needs to be at a merger of 
the government intervening, but the market leading the way. And I think that this pair, this coming together, this coupleization of those two forces can really bring about change. We do not want to see a government or a politically set agenda completely with valuations set by a public institutions. We want the private market to set those valuations and terms, but we need more money. And I think this is the main problem that Europe is facing, is that our startups, our venture capital ecosystem is so underfunded. So the government absolutely must intervene and provide for larger financing rounds, for larger venture capital funds to be able to compete with what is out there. Europe is probably four times behind the US right now in terms of venture capital available, venture capital spending, and it's much further behind China, although last year has shown that it has actually grown a lot. And this means that now investors from all over the world are seeing this excellence that Europe is delivering. Early stage venturing is is risky. At the same time, the seed rounds are getting bigger and bigger. Yes, it's risky, but it's delivering the returns. And the pandemic has shown that. Now, Europe um, has grown immensely. And an incredible number of U.S. investors, U.S. funds, are now setting up shop in Europe, in Berlin, in Paris, in London, right across different markets. They are really, really seeing this early stage opportunity. Now, valuations in Europe are still lower than they are elsewhere. Talent in Europe is probably still more available than elsewhere. The amount of capital that was pumped into Europe, I think it's 900% up year on year in larger companies. But the same goes for smaller companies. What is happening is I think for the first time in history, we are seeing unicorns built over a period of 12 to 18 months, right from the very seed financing. Large rounds are being raised and companies are able to grow and really, really become global. The total value of the European ecosystem just crossed 3 trillion. Um, And that means that it's tripled in just about three years. So there's a huge, huge opportunity here Um, And I think, you know, if you are an investor anywhere out there, then the place that you should be really doing business is here in Europe. What are your top three recommendations to a young entrepreneur who's starting out in tech in Europe today? You must raise fast and raise a lot to give you the runway to allow your team to concentrate on what is most important, which is building value for the company. So do raise fast and raise a lot. And be bold. I think surrounding yourself with people around who are much more experienced in areas than you are is absolutely key. Everyone is reachable today. And just you just need to be bold and just reach out. To stay ahead, you must be fast and stay very focused on your goal. You are very active in uh, women in tech. Can you tell us about uh, issues facing female fund managers in Europe and some of the ways Europe can step up in this area. We need to be investing in those areas that are providing the impact and the quality of life we want. And I think as women, uh, we started researching these areas and we realized that female-led funds are exactly investing in line with positive impact projects, with SDGs, with climate change, with sustainability, circular economy, healthcare, silver economy, all those areas, education, digital education, all those areas that we really, really want to see at the forefront. Europe is raising unprecedented amounts of money But then the share of the pie for females is either staying the same or it's actually going down, which means that the women that are really working on these super important solutions for society are not getting funded. 1% of VC money went to female founders. Under EIC, it's actually 20%. 
And the target is 40% of companies to have at least one female founder. So this is really game changing. The 70 to 80% of consumer decisions are actually female driven. So we need to have that excellence. We need to catalyze that huge part of the economy and allow women across different fields to access finance and deliver the results and move us forward. That is the responsibility of venture, to make sure that there is fair and open access to capital at all levels of the venture capital ecosystem for women and for minorities. Now, how do we do this? We need a common taxonomy in Europe for understanding what a female-led or a co-led fund is. Who owns the general partnership and who gets the carry? Because those are the real decision makers. Women only have about 4% of assets under management in VC that they can readily deploy. The rest is not gender diverse. What we would like to see is a fund of funds that will really be the first ticket to help those fund managers fundraise and fundraise large amounts so that they can compete on global markets. Third point that can really change the face of venture is structuring. See, the way a VC fund is structured for a 10-year time horizon um, with a 2% management fee and a 20% carry and all the other typical um, clauses and typical terms, they've been around for 50 years. But at the same time, we are operating in an industry that's investing at the forefront of technology. It's real venture. So let's think about VC more as a data-driven space, as transparent and readily available for the limited partner community so that they can easily deploy and track funds. And let's think of more flexible structures and allow new fund managers, emerging fund managers to come to the market. That is the ultimate goal, is to bring in diversity, bring in not just gender diversity, but all kinds of diversity, younger managers, older managers, managers of different backgrounds into this space so that we can make sure all those innovations that are there for positive impact and a better Europe are really, really getting financed. The good news is it's very, very much dependent on money. Money solves a lot of problems in terms of getting to a more diverse venture capital ecosystem. If we do target the money into the right type of venture capital funds with diverse managers, we will, in a very, very short time frame, have a very, very different VC ecosystem. Kinga, when I look at the European Innovation Scorecard, most of the newer member states, including your home country, Poland, are catching up in their innovation performance, but uh, they're still lagging in terms of investment. What can these countries do? And what can the EU do to change this? Indeed, Central and Eastern Europe is one of the least funded areas of the European Union. And only around 5% of VC funding in 2021 went to CEE-based companies, um, despite the fact that the region has a huge population. And all the more, it has a huge population of absolutely amazing software developers. But those developers are also developing their own companies. And um, what we are seeing is that a huge percentage of unicorns that are coming to the market from CEE are still bootstrapped. We are seeing that they are sometimes listed on stock exchanges. We are seeing that they actually get to cash flow positive with their own means and without venture funding. Because historically, venture funding was not really available. Pension funds do not invest. Banks do not invest. Insurance companies do not invest. This means that the source of funding for VC funds in Central Europe is private individuals, and those usually do not commit large amounts. And that causes the funds to be limited in size, and therefore their spending power is also much limited. The whole ecosystem of angel investors, of funds, of mentors, of accelerators. 
I would like to see that happen right across all of Central Europe because the potential is clearly there. It's still much cheaper to build a unicorn in Central Europe than it would be in the more developed parts of the world. So investors are coming in and seeing this huge opportunity of making 100x on their investments. But this is an area that requires government intervention to ensure that the companies from this region are raising more, are raising faster and have access to larger funds. We need entrepreneurs that make the world a better place. Do you believe impact can be rewarded by the investors as much as financial performance? And if that's the case, how? Well, absolutely. Um, this is the responsibility of venture capital firms to back those companies that are bringing about positive change. And in the past, this was unfortunately not a trend. However, this is an area where Europe is in the clear lead. And it has a higher percentage of investment going into purpose-driven startups. Investors are very, very much aware that it's not just a question of financial return. It's a question of putting that financial return, which is not lower. It can actually be much higher together with delivering the positive impact. It's a much, much more bigger motivation to be bringing solutions and products to the market that are positive for the environment and society. So, you know, as a startup founder, why would you do anything else than that? We're seeing that the places that young people want to work in and develop their careers are exactly those companies. They want to be mission driven. They want to deliver those results. And that's, I think, the most positive about, about Europe and about bringing about this positive change. Kinga, thank you very much for all the insights and thank you for doing this session with me today. Thank you very much, Chihab. It's been a pleasure. Thank you for inviting me and thank you for a wonderful morning. <laughs>